discussed about coexistence today reflect on coexistence in existence that is submergence of nature in space and describe the coexistence of the four orders in space by yourself in your journal being particular about selection of words note down your observations we can discuss them so yesterday we discussed at length the harmony in the existence the coexistence in the existence and then we could see how the personal transformation can lead to societal transformation by awakening to the higher activities of the self so we can see that the self has the potential to awaken to the activity of contemplation understanding and realization we discussed about contemplation and understanding earlier yesterday we discussed at length about the activity of realization and also the submergence of nature in space we can see how nature is collection of two kinds of units material and consciousness which are there in four orders physical order bio order animal order and human order how are they submerged in space and you can also see that out of the four orders it is only the human order which has the potential to know to awaken to the high level activities and this is what we are working for if you look at the point 2 in the assignment that was basically meant to develop the competence to express coexistence so when it comes to expressing coexistence then we need to be very particular about the choice of words we need to be clear about the meaning of what is being said that's how this assignment was given so if anyone has done it well and good uh even not done then you can still raise your hand and share your reflection or ask your question so we try to look at the meaning of each and every word that is presented in the slide so we can see that existence is coexistence and that is unit submerged in space now to begin with where we started discussing from the basic issue that we are trying to resolve is whether happiness is our innate nature or is it some external influence so the net outcome of all this discussion is going to be that we are able to conclude naturally within oneself that happiness is my innate nature that means that i am happy with right understanding right feeling right thought in the self and i do not have to depend on something outside for happiness so that i am always there in a state of happiness and participating with happiness and not for happiness if i am not able to see the happiness as my innate nature then i am trying to fetch happiness from outside and there are two primary modes of fetching happiness from outside one is to get favorable sensation from the body and the other is to get favorable feeling from others and whenever i go for this i am not at peace with myself i am not comfortable within i am somewhat restless i get anxious when i get it when i do not get it then also i get anxious so it's not a state of harmony a state of synergy that i need to work for now when happiness has to become my innate nature so i have to understand the reality as it is so i have to understand the relationship i have to understand the harmony i have to realize the coexistence so having understood this priority then we try to look at human consciousness and we could see that to ensure happiness and continuity right understanding right feeling relationship and physical facility or the three are required that also with the correct priority and happiness is nothing but to be state of harmony we also discussed about prosperity prosperity is the feeling of having or producing more than required <coughs> physical facilities now having discussed this we talked about human being and we could see that human being is coexistence of self and body self is the conscious entity while body is the material entity it is the self which is the seer doer enjoyer or experiencer not the body body is merely an instrument and self is central to human existence now having discussed this then we discussed about self that is me that is i so i start looking at myself we'll do this in detail in exercise 1 also so when i look within i can see that there is imagination in me 
and the desire, thought, and expectation in me, which makes my imagination. My desire, thought, and expectation only guides my behavior, work, and participation. And the imagination is continuous. I can be observant of the content of my imagination every moment. So when I start observing the content of imagination, I pay attention to the desire that I have at this moment, the thought that I have this at this moment, the expectation that I have at this moment. I can also see the sources of my imagination, whether it is preconditioning or sensation or natural acceptance. Now, going elaborately in my imagination, I can also see that when I reflect on my natural acceptance, I'm able to see the potential for higher level activities, which is there in block B1. And once this gets awakened, then block B2 is self-organized. Now what we are working for essentially in our workshop, in our meetings, in our morning session, we are trying to awaken to the higher level activities. The potential of which is already there in me. Now contemplation is to see the relationship the participation in the larger order. Understanding is to see the harmony of the four orders, the physical order, bio order, animal order, human order. But uh, going through this while contemplating, while understanding, I also want to see the basis for this. So this motivates me to see the basis for relationship, the basis for harmony. And then I realize how this whole existence is coexistence, how all the units are submerged in space. Isn't it? Being submerged in space, how every unit is energized, self-organized. Recognizing the relationship and fulfilling it. And then I come to realize the existence as coexistence. And then everything becomes clear to me. Nothing remains as a mystery to me. So once accomplished, then I can see that I'm innately happy. I'm happy by myself all the time. I'm in a state of bliss. I'm always satisfied. I'm always peace at peace with myself. I'm always happy. This is the coveted state. Unless this is accomplished, we are craving for happiness. And mostly we are craving for happiness outside. And this craving is not my desired state. I want to be happy by myself. So for that only, we discuss the harmony in the existence. So the clarity of the proposal is a must if I go to explore something. So as you keep on saying that when you go for self-exploration, there are three things. One is to have the clarity of the proposal that is being said. So that's how we said that. Try to look at the meaning of all the words that are presented on the slide. Try to make out the difference between two words. Try to make out the reason for selection of a particular word how it has been placed like this. So the proposal has to be clear to me. Then I have to verify within and see whatever is written here, is it acceptable to me naturally? Am I judging by my borrowed information or I am reflecting on it and I am trying to verify it? I have to make out. And then I also have to validate it in my living. So you'll see that when we discuss harm in the existence, we could have lot many questions from various sources that we have come across. We might have read something in the books. We might have listened to some lectures. We might have talked to people and got some reactions or responses about the reality. So there could be lot many issues yet to be resolved. And the formal education, the way it is designed today, is not able to resolve it. So we are, though formally educated, still full of so many doubts, apprehensions, carrying mysteries within, you know, not clear of the reality. And we are always in a state of fear or doubt or apprehension because the clarity is not there. So this clarity is a must. This is what we are trying to work for. Now, once we are clear about the proposal, the introductory part, then we go to exercise one and then we go to exercise two. Uh, Bhaiya, this is a simple question. I don't know whether it is right or not. Uh, when I was thinking about coexistence, Baya, I was just reminded, like, a coffee is a coexistence of milk, water, sugar. A food is a coexistence of so many ingredients. 
But then when I'm I, when I'm thinking like this, I can see that is the dependence. The coffee will be good when all these are in right proportion. So does it uh, mean like that by a coexistence of so many ingredients to form a uh, another in uh, item or food, something like that by a? See, everything is there by virtue of coexistence. So we'll not list some example like coffee or something for this. So you can see uh, that uh. milk, tea, a uh, milk, coffee, sugar, you know, they have a different form and property. When we uh. understand the property, when we are able to have the clarity of that, and then we utilize that clarity, and then we are able to make a coffee which may appeal to the taste. Now there uh. also there is no definiteness or continuity. Maybe mm -hmm. somebody may call the preparation a very good preparation. Somebody may call a very bad preparation. Like there will be people who would like to go for coffee without milk and they call it very good, very strong coffee. Mm -hmm. There will be some who will be looking for milk more and coffee less and then only call it a mm -hmm. good coffee. So the being of coffee, the being of milk, the being of sugar is by virtue of coexistence. It's not that the preparation you know, is to be termed as coexistence. The coexistence mm -hmm. was there, is there, it will be there. When the coffee had not grown the coffee was there just a part of the plant there also the coexistence was there still the coexistence is there when it goes to my body and gets absorbed by my cells then also the coexistence is there so in place of giving examples of contemplate uh, coexistence we need to see mm -hmm. at the base and you know, we need to see it as it is giving examples may lead to some erroneous conclusions also so, mm -hmm. for example, if somebody is misbehaving, disrespecting, mm -hmm. you know, or violating the dignity of someone, then also mm -hmm. you can say that, okay, is this the coexistence of the two? So, uh, the being of the two human beings, their behavior, all that is by virtue of coexistence. Everything in this mm -hmm. existence is by virtue of coexistence. Whether it is favorable or not, whether it is mm -hmm. to be termed as good or bad. So, in place of saying this, we can just say that, yes, it is a good composition, not coexistence. The coffee mm -hmm. has a good composition. The mm -hmm. coffee has a bad composition. Otherwise, we will start terming good or bad for coexistence also. Mm -hmm. Which is not there. See, coexistence is submergence of nature and space. It's not the composition or decomposition. By virtue of submergence, composition, decomposition is taking place. Uh, Baya, you said there is a coexistence in the coffee plant. Uh, can you throw more light on that, Baya? For my understanding, Baya. Yeah, so I'm saying uh, uh, every activity in this nature is by virtue of coexistence. The plant is growing. The plant is giving fruits and flowers. Okay, The plant mm. is dying and going back to the soil. Every activity in the plant is by virtue of coexistence. Coexistence with space, not air, not sunlight, like that. See, basically, we'll say that it is there in coexistence. It is submerged in space, not with space. Everything is there mm. in space. So, I should not bring other units like sun, water, sunlight, which are helping the plant to grow. No, I shouldn't think like that. Coexistence means. No, it is by virtue of coexistence. So the sun is there, the plant is there, the soil is there, the growth in the plant is there. Now this is all an expression of coexistence. Mm -hmm. All units independently. I shouldn't link all the units. They are helping the plant to grow. That is coexistence, not like that. Every unit independently as it is, it is coexistence in coexistence and is helping or in, it is in relation with other units also because uh, of its coexistence being submerged in space. Yeah, coexistence is the entirety. Mm. See, it is the submergence of nature. We are talking of the nature as a whole. So, the nature, the whole nature is submerged in space. That mm -hmm. is being mm -hmm. And then, then it is expressing itself in terms of different orders, in terms of their activities, mm -hmm. their form and properties, in terms of 
their innateness, their relationship. So it is an expression of coexistence. So I'll say that when we are taking some examples, it's better to use the right word, like composition mm -hmm. would be a better word than coexistence. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, we'll start terming something as good coexistence, something as bad coexistence. So when we mm -hmm. use three spoons of sugar in place of one, we'll call it that this is a bad coexistence of coffee and sugar. It is not mm -hmm. the right way to express. Mm -hmm. Somebody was looking for coffee without sugar and we put sugar. Then somebody may say that it's mm -hmm. a bad coexistence. No. Coexistence is not like bad or good. It is mm -hmm. just as it is. It is there. Mm -hmm. Okay. As far as myself, this is clear. By a human being means coexistence of self and body. And that I could make it out. So only together they can make a human being. So I can call human beings the coexistence of self and body. But when yeah, it so comes to other units... Body, coexistence of self and body is something definite. Mm -hmm. We are not preparing it. Anna. We are not doing it by our own assumption. It is something definite. The way mm -hmm. self But when you're preparing something, then you have to be a little particular about the usage of word. Mm -hmm. So, give an example, no, that the coffee preparation may be good or bad. Then will we call it as a good coexistence or a bad coexistence? Similarly, that the example we can... Or bad. So, it, we can call it good behavior or bad behavior. That is fine. Mm -hmm. You cannot say that these people in the family have bad coexistence. No, we can only say that they are not able to coexist or they are not able to you know, stay together. A better way to say. So, we are not able to coexist because we do not realize the coexistence. We are not able to ensure harmony because we are not able to understand harmony. That is fine. Mm. But in itself, and, uh, it is there. The natural acceptance is there. The coexistence is there. I am not able to see it. I am not able to understand it. That is the only problem. So that's how we will see that we do not give examples for higher level activity. Something that I mentioned earlier also. When it comes to giving the examples, we give something at the level of desire, thought, expectation or something to do with our behavior or participation. But we do not give examples of contemplation, understanding, and realization. We just have to see the content of it and see it as it is. Okay, Baya. Thank you so much. Let me explore, Baya. So, when I was thinking of writing examples, only such examples are coming, Baya, to me. That they coexist to form a coffee, they coexist to form a food like that. Only I was thinking, okay. No. Now, see, when you are talking about higher level activity, you only need to give examples. Mm -hmm. just G -G. the clarity yeah no need to give examples mm -hmm. nice Didi. keep it open and explore more thank you so much see this is nothing like <laughs> keeping open exploring further I am just saying as soon as you give examples it becomes something to do with form and property we are trying to look at something which is universal Mm -hmm. So, in place of giving example, we have to see it as it is. Mm -hmm. No need to give examples of contemplation, understanding, or realization. But in the assignment for the second point, you asked to note as So, yeah, now we got this question because you are trying to write. When you go to uh, write, you get multiple such questions. Whether I should write this or not, whether this is in line with right understanding or not. So, mm -hmm. that's to test your understanding also. For mm -hmm. example, when you to share something in the workshop and you have tried to write it beforehand. Then by yourself, you can evaluate so many things. Otherwise, you express something to the people and people ask cross questions and you get caught up. Namaste, everyone. So, Bhaiya, whenever the word coexistence comes, so, uh, there is a feeling in me that uh, whenever I think of a particular, say, human being, say, I am taking the example, 
then uh, human being uh, say uh, it is uh, composed of self and body and uh, whenever we come to body we just uh, confine uh, our think uh, thought to our body then we feel that uh, in our body several activities are going on uh, say the brain is also doing the activities so thought desire thought expectations and then um, our uh, inhale exhale then digest digestion is also going on so everything is working properly so they are not interfering with one another um similarly if we uh, go to the self then self is also doing activity continuously so without the interference of one another so i think that whenever we take the example of the human body i i'm feeling that uh, all the activities are going on properly without interfering therefore they are coexisting sir uh, no, am i not like that no see this interference also is by virtue of coexistence everything that is there in the existence is by virtue of coexistence whether it is favorable or not and in place of saying that human being is composition there we can say human being is coexistence because the self does not compose or decompose so bhaiya um, so this is not uh, the um, clarity of coexistence uh, means whenever we go to the higher level we think that uh, uh, everybody the self then um, then up to the nature the four levels they are all coexisting so in broad way only we can uh, refer that particular meaning what is coexistence according to you what do you mean by coexistence um existing self and body doing activities so we are submerged no, let me in space coexistence is submergence of nature in space no uh, yes so each and every unit being submerged in space is self organized self energized Recognizing the relationship and fulfilling it. This is what coexistence is. So we have to understand this. We have to look at this as it is. Now, being merged in space, then we can look at how every unit is, you know, uh, having a form, having property, having innateness, having uh, relationship. So we can look at this. But the essence of this whole is coexistence. That's how we'll see that. we are trying to avoid examples because there will be some examples which will be contrary to what we assume as coexistence if somebody is committing a crime then will we call it coexistence or not if somebody is doing some unfavorable behavior is it by virtue of coexistence or not so then we may have otherwise we start looking at favorable things as coexistence and unfavorable things as contrary to coexistence which is not there so just i am saying that we have to be particular about the choice of words okay okay bhai yeah. and whenever we uh, come to the word uh, submergence then is it like that that uh, we are uh, in earth the earth is in the solar system again if we go more bro uh, broader than it is in milky way like this so every unit they are having some laws of nature <coughs> gravitational attraction so like that feelings have uh, come in my mind whenever i am thinking about the word submergence yeah so the laws in nature are also by are also by virtue by <coughs> virtue of coexistence so by virtue of coexistence only the earth is rotating about its axis revolving around the sun the galaxies are active all these things are happening by virtue of coexistence so this is an expression so you'll see that coexistence is ever expressing mm. ever ever effective so mm -hmm. they are very much there ever present so we say three things about coexistence that it is ever present ever expressing and ever effective and all that is there in the nature 
as an activity is by virtue of coexistence. Whether it is the revolution of the earth around the sun or rotation of the earth about its axis or the growth of plants or mm. the uh, being of the animals, being of humans, being of buildings, soil, air, water. The coexistence is there at the base. So in place of giving examples, you can say that this all is by virtue of coexistence, whether it is favorable or unfavorable. That is a different thing. Unfa if it is unfavorable also, then also coexistence is there. If some meteorite tomorrow comes and collides with the planet, we cannot mm -hmm. say that the coexistence has been violated. No. Yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> it is again by virtue of coexistence. Yes. If volcano erupts and the forest gets burned completely, the animals and birds are no more there. Still, it is by virtue of coexistence. Maya, good morning. Uh, uh, listening to all the previous conversations, I just I can conclude that uh, only uh, coexistence may, in space means only the existence of that body. We do not consider its properties, isn't it? No, was not okay audible. Uh, just say it again. So. Uh, listening to all the previous conversations, I conclude that only uh, the I'll take out the microphone. Yes, we are. So only the uh, existence of that particular unit in space is coexistence. We do not take its property into considerations. Yes, we are. No, I am saying the form, the property, the relationship, the innateness, all this is by virtue of coexistence. So coexistence is submergence of nature and space, that's all. This that's is something that you are... observe directly. So, so yes, as you gave, gave an example that somebody is committing the crime. So the just the human being existing in space along with other units is coexistence. We do not take the properties of human beings now. Only as a whole, its existence we take. Yes. Better way to say is that all that is getting expressed is also by virtue of coexistence. So taking or not taking is not the issue. The issue is seeing the reality. Virtue means what, Bahia? What do you mean by virtue of coexistence? Virtue means that the coexistence is there at the base. It is expressing as conduct. Is expressing as form and property. Okay. Okay. Fine. Got. Got. Thank you, Bhaiya. Nice, Didi. Tara Bhaiya is saying, can we say submergence of existence in place of nature? No, Bhaiya. When we say existence, then it includes space also. That's how we say submergence of nature in space. Amandiya is asking, development is not cyclic in human order meaning. Yeah, development is not cyclic. It means that once developed, once awakened to the higher level activities, I cannot go back to the animal consciousness. So once the activities are awakened, then I cannot go back to the initial state. It is going to be there in continuity. Once I am able to see the relationship, it is going to be there. Once I am able to see the harmony, it is going to be there. Once I realize the whole existence of coexistence, it is going to be there. It cannot be undone. So the plant may grow and go back to the soil. The building may be raised as a tower of 100 stories and can go back to the soil. But once I am awakened to the high level activities, I cannot go back to the initial state. That is how development is. Nature is subset of space or vice versa. You should know. Nature is collection of units. It is there submerged in space. It is not subset or something. It is completely different from space. Space is no activity while nature is activity. So there is nothing like a misfit. Sometimes people use this word that you are a misfit. 
Now, when you say misfit, it essentially means that your conduct does not fit into the harmony of that order. That is fine. So, for example, there is a family of five people, let's say, and one person is always in opposition with others, always carrying an opposition for others. Then we may say that this, if the family has to be in harmony, this person is a misfit. So, this kind of usage is fine. And that essentially is to indicate that the person has to develop the competence and others have to complement it. So that is fine. If a person is committing crimes, when the person becomes misfit for the society, that's how the person is sent to the jail. That you are not fit to be in society, to so go to the jail. And there you can be transformed. In coffee, milk and coffee, water do not exist separately, like self and body. No, not like that. Coffee exists separately, milk exists separately. If anybody asks, show me the concept of God in which we, then how do I answer? Now, just try to see what do we mean by God. When we refer to God, what are we trying to refer to? So, one has to look into one's notion about God. So the reality is there in front of space, in, in front of us, you know. And then we have to see how we relate God to. So we may relate God to space. We may relate God to submergence of nature in space. Or we may relate God to consciousness. When we are using the word God for deities, then we are trying to relate the word God to the consciousness. The consciousness units which got evolved, which got awakened to the high level activities. So one has to look into one's own notion of God. The reality is there in front of us. Isn't it? Another thing to note is that we try to give some attributes to God. Now, you know, if I understand the reality as it is, then I can give the right attribute to the word also. So for example, this is not a creation. This is existence. If you, see, if you assume that this is a creation, then somebody has to be a creator. Then if somebody has to be created, then there could be somebody who created that creator and so on. And it could be an endless chain. So we have to see the reality as it is there, which is ever present. You know, it was there, which is there, which will be there. Saying God can be related to natural acceptance. So that's what I'm saying. You try to look into your meaning of God. And the reality is there in front of us, which is proposed here. Okay. Only thing is that I have to see whether my assuming about God is in line with my natural acceptance or in line with the reality or not. This is something that I have to verify for myself. Whatever is happening in this universe, uh, Bhaiya, can we say it is also because of the coexistence? Yes. I'm not using the word because, because, because <laughs> means that there is a cause. Okay. And then there's a cause and effect relationship. So it is not the cause. It is something there at the base. So cause can be better used for activities, not for no activity. So that's how we are using the word by virtue of. No, but yeah, that's uh, what is coming to my mind is suppose if asteroid hits to the earth, something happens. But we can say this is by asteroid hits to the earth. Yes. Something happens worst. So we can say that it is by the virtue of coexistence. And same thing, yes. human beings can also do something destruction like atomic yes. bomb putting it. So can we say both are same? In place of saying both are same, we'll say that both are activities by virtue of coexistence. Now, in one situation, the lack of right understanding can be seen. If a person is creating a nuclear bomb and bombing some part of society. But if a meteorite is coming and you know, colliding with the planet, Earth, then it's not because of lack of right understanding in the human being. So we cannot say that two are the same, but we can see how this activity is taking place. Is something that can be seen very clearly. Bhaiya, as the happiness is my innate nature, 
and while observing all these existence when uh, we observe that in the same scenario in the same conditions uh, either in an office a colleague is calm and another colleague in the same scenario may be uh, reacting may be giving reactions here the person who is responding is at calm uh, if i consider th uh, that per, uh, human being as a awakening self and the person who is giving reaction uh, if i consider that human being as deluded self and this and since the development in the self is not cyclic and self is being continued uh, so we no i'll stop here itself bhai 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 actually i'm i'm I mean, not I'm the 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 way you are doing wrong i have to i have okay okay okay, okay 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 please please, please. Yeah. yeah yeah so the person who is getting disturbed getting anxious is not having understanding time is not awakening to the deluded self but for the person who is calm may still be deluded it's not mm. that the person is awakened या भैया एक्चुअली आई जनरलाइज द थिंग्स मींस इन मोस्ट ऑफ द केसेस ओके भैया एक्चुअली प्लीज लेट मी कम टू द एक्चुअल क्वेश्चन सो भैया एक्चुअली माय क्वेश्चन वाज दैट अ इफ एनी पर्सन हु हु इज इन अवेकनिंग प्रोसेस एनी ह्यूमन बीइंग एंड द सेल्फ सेल्फ लेफ्ट द बॉडी एट दैट पॉइंट व्हेन द पर्सन ह्यूमन बीइंग वाज जस्ट अवेकनिंग and in the next uh, in that self uh, takes another body uh, in next body journey then uh, uh, he, he uh, all these are in his he he or her sanskar and uh, he uh, started uh, he uh, he or her a uh, beginning process from from there so bhaiya can i as i uh, as you uh, just explained cause and effect so bhaiya can may i conclude that this cause and any effect is nothing but a law of karma uh, which is well explained by the concept of akashic records am i going right getting it right the cause and effect is there in every activity now when you say karma hai na then you have to again look into the meaning of the word karma as you are saying because you try to be, wait wait hmm. Because we try to attribute this to so many things, then. So, if you look at the cause and effect within you, so the simple thing is that the moment you have the feeling of opposition, you feel unhappy. So hmm. the feeling of opposition is the cause. Unhappiness is the effect. Yeah. Okay. Now, when you say that this happened because thirty years back, you know, you had done something to the other person, so then you try to relate to so many things which may not be explored. So just observe the reality as it is. No need. Okay. Ah, uh, brother, actually, karma ah uh, from one sutra of Madhyas Dorsan, niyam purva kiye ke kare ko sukarm tatha iske ah uh, viprit ko duskarm sangya hai. Kuch aisa tha. To wahan se main law of karma ko relate kar pa rahi thi. No, abhi dekhiye, abhi apne bahut sa chizi mix kar di. Uska bhi aap rehne dijiye. Abhi dekhiye, the samne prastav uske dekha jaye, na? ठीक बढ़िया बढ़िया ठीक है वो तो वो जो बात कही गई है वो कुछ और है ठीक है अच्छा हमने उसको कुछ और रख दिया फिर उससे हमने इसको कुछ और रख दे दिया तो हम अपने विचारों में इतने खो जाएंगे कि उससे कुछ निकलेगा नहीं तो मैं उसी के अर्थ को समझना चाह रही थी ठीक है भैया कभी किसी और प्लेटफॉर्म पे पूछूं ये अभी आप लोग जैसे हमें समझाया कि जो भी है वो उसका वर्च्यू है सह अस्तित्व का सब वर्च्यू ऑफ द को एग्जिस्टेंस तो ये ठीक है और जैसे हम लोगों फिर हम लोग दूसरी बात उसको कहते हैं कि हमारे अंदर जो सहज स्वीकृति है वो उसका रिफ्लेक्शन है 
तो आप इसको वर्च्यू ऑफ को एग्जिस्टेंस और रिफ्लेक्शन ऑफ को एग्जिस्टेंस इसको थोड़ा सा एक लाइन में समझा दीजिए डिफ्रेंसिएट करके हाँ सो वी कैन से दैट इज रिफ्लेक्शन वी कैन से दैट इज एक्सप्रेशन वी कैन यूज दिस टू वर्ड्स आल्सो इट इज एन एक्सप्रेशन ऑफ कोएग्जिस्टेंस इट इज रिफ्लेक्शन ऑफ कोएग्जिस्टेंस दैट इज आल्सो फाइन इज दिस द वर्च्यू ऑफ कोएग्जिस्टेंस एंड एक्सप्रेशन ऑफ कोएग्जिस्टेंस आर द सेम वर्ड हां सो द वे वी आर ट्राइंग टू एक्सप्रेस इट हियर yeah we are using in the same sense there will be some limitation to words always but the way we are trying to distinguish is that no activity has to be clearly understood and activity has to be clearly understood if you try to add some attribute which does not be attributed to the no activity then that becomes a problem yes yes ji bhai question was like in coexistence um Uh, I could imagine the material units and its transformation from one form to another, uh, getting back. All that is a bit easier. Uh, when I was imagining this uh, self, uh, uh, conscious units, um, and uh, seeing that they exist forever, uh, they get associated with uh, material units. or to form different orders like animal order human order and uh, they are there forever they are they making the journey um uh, and because they are there there is no birth and death of uh, conscious unit they exist uh so then this uh, question like um uh there is limitation i mean is there a limitation on number of uh, conscious units um uh, and like when we uh when we like technologically create something like test tube babies okay then essentially we are uh, uh what i mean we are trying to create the material units uh, as a form of human bodies and then how the self get attached to them uh whether it is irrespective of the process of um a uh, process of formation of human body um and uh, so many uh, so questions then uh, arise uh, out of that um and um uh, so uh, uh, so what is the question yeah so the question like can you elaborate on this uh, you know existence of self i mean conscious unit the number of units or do we have to think about the uh, units uh, conscious units and in that manner uh, logically that what are what is the number of conscious units and uh, all that or uh, elaborate on the birth or death of the conscious units or that doesn't exist they are there always Uh, so how to look at it i mean see the essential task here is to look at one's self and see the existence of the self once i am able to see the existence of the self the rest follows okay so in place of looking at the total count of the self you know whether it is definite or it is changing or something so we are able to see that self is a continuous unit once there it is there in continuity isn't it mm. yeah and the animal also has self the humans also have self the self can exist even without the body yes okay so we have a better understanding of the self there is also a possibility that some material unit gets transformed to a conscious unit this can be there as a possibility okay Okay. so this possibility is also there but okay. when we look at the whole nature we can see that there are so many conscious units so many animals so many human beings and the self is going to exist even if the body is not there but yes if the body is there and you know, as a part of some animal or human then the self is there for sure this is something that we can see yes so no in place of 
paying attention to the total count or something. We have to see <laughs> yeah. what is there in the cell, what is happening to the cell, how the yeah. cell is getting transformed. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah, I mean, I, I understand the focus and the importance of observing rather than, you know, it's all the other things are kind of analyzing. But sometimes this analyzing or do also has a place. And uh, that's why I just question you. We need how to, to be clear about all the queries that we have within us. But we have to yeah. keep you know, something at the focus. Then rest we follow. True. <laughs> Gita is saying coexistence involves <clears throat> more than one unit or a single unit can be coexistence. See, <laughs> let me say it again. Coexistence is submergence of nature in space. Now, the nature has so many uncountable units. So, it's not that it is one unit or two units. It is a submergence. Can we say that we cannot understand coexistence at the level of B2, but only realize when awakened to be one. So we can analyze what coexistence means. So that's what we have been doing. If you look at the discussion that we had, we are trying to analyze the meaning of coexistence. You know, we are trying to image what coexistence is, isn't it? And with that, we are also testing that this could be the meaning. We are try trying to test the meaning of coexistence also. So this is what we can do. This is the limitation of block B2. But when it comes to seeing the coexistence as it is, then I have to awaken to the activity of realization. May you, can we say the coexistence is a feeling? The feeling is an expression of coexistence. Yes, yes. <laughs> feeling is a coexistence. Yeah. Expression of coexistence. And where, uh, when I mean, some part of this coexistence being realized within, then uh, the interrelatedness is means very much ensured and uh, like we were discussing about the event yesterday uh, you know, the builder son has uh, I think killed two person in that way we are discussing the Pune incident so uh, when we look at uh, many things which is happening good and many things which is uh, means, uh, which are happening not good and when we are looking at the level of coexistence or uh, somewhere from upper block, I think we always uh, see uh, in a level like, yeah, there is somewhere lack of understanding, lack of education, and something we can do with uh, education or what we can do. Isn't it? Instead of getting opposed with the person who did wrong, or instead of uh, getting being inclined with or uh, like uh, devotee of a person who is doing good, so is it like that? If you can uh, put your uh, suggestion in this uh, figure. See, we yeah, we can see very much beforehand, you know, even though the incident is not taking place, that this may happen. And whatever will happen is going to happen by the law of nature, which is by virtue of coexistence. So if a person does not have right understanding, one is uncomfortable within. So when one is uncomfortable within, then one can go for intoxication. So this person took liquor of 29,000 rupees in a bar before driving his bike or car. maybe. So the person may go for intoxication. If the person is intoxicated, then he will not do the driving rightly. And if the person is not driving rightly, he can hit someone. So this is very much clear. And we can see proactively that if the right education is not being given, if the parents do not have right understanding, right feeling, the environment is just like that. At every nook and corner, you can find bars. And we can see that our children are going to bars. Parents are drinking with their children you know, at home. And this has become a common scenario. Husband and wife are drinking together. If that is the scenario in the society. So occurrences of such kinds of events you know, is somewhat very much expected. It's only that only one incident took place. Otherwise, thousands would have taken place. So you can see very much that the human goal is not being fulfilled in the society. So you have to work for it. Now, if some incident has taken place, then we'll take 
cognizance of that. We'll take appropriate action for that. So that the right message goes to the society. People do not feel that whatever they do, they can do it and just you know, uh, move is caught free. That is not there. So we'll take some action, but at the same time, try to educate the society. You see, these incidences are opening the eyes also <clears throat> of the people that what kind of education we are giving, what kind of environment we are in. <clears throat> now you'll see that every month or two months such incidences keep on taking place somebody you know in a living relationship is cutting the fancy into pieces <laughs> and throwing the body then we see that the whole society is talking about this somebody's you know uh, driving a car uh, goes over the sleeping people on the roadside and then that becomes a news somebody who is, a, who is drunk just goes and hits some people and that becomes a news society. So we get alarmed at times when such news comes, but we can see very proactively, very much that this is quite possible. If people are not having different conduct, if the education is not ensuring different conduct, then this is going to happen. And let me say that this is not only limited to education, the role to ensure the harm society. Ultimately, every human being has to understand the human goal and to live accordingly. So the natural acceptance is there in every human being, okay? But we are also able to see that unless I am clear about the natural acceptance, I can, I will be having indefinite conduct because I am self-organized being in this space. So I'm going to be unhappy. I'm going to have indefinite conduct and I can have different conduct only with the right understanding, right feeling for which I have to awaken to the higher level activities. So all this can become clear to us. So we're not get surprised when such news comes. But yes, we'll feel more responsible to the society now. This is just one case. If you open up, so many cases are taking place. Nice. There is some limitation yes, yes, of time. Yes. Mm -hmm. Just means uh, that you mentioned in the last sentence, that is, uh, means we feel more responsible rather being affected or being if negative happens, whether uh, sorrowful or if positive happens, being excited. Instead of that, we we are being focused to our role. Jimmy, thank you. Yes. Uh, but yeah, actually, that brings to another uh, actually situation. I don't know what is happening. Like maybe I'm more conscious these days towards uh, you know uh, because I uh, early morning when we realize about ourselves, our uh, observations. So this comes. Yesterday there was a HR conflict, and so there there was a uh, you know uh, there somebody said that there was a uh, there's a flight Emirates uh, a flight. It was flying uh, a while it was flying. It killed uh, sixty eight flamingos at a go. So then the question came is now when we talk of nature and humans coexist or existence and coexistence. So now. Uh, who is responsible for this? Like either it is uh, uh, like either the uh, plane or the flamingos or uh, and uh, particularly when we talk of uh, the ownership of the uh, nature. So who owns that? So see, when we talk we of this, in the nature, yeah. in the nature it is the self, is the seer, doer and enjoyer or experiencer. And that is something that you can see very much. So whatever we are doing, it will be the self which is the seer and doer and enjoyer, not the body, not the physiochemical units. You know, the flamingo also has self. The human being driving the plane also has self. So we have to understand the nature. We have to understand the events that may take place in the nature and then plan accordingly. So see, we become so much alarmed because many times we are not giving or we are not paying attention to the nature as it is. So we can see that this is quite possible. You know, this is quite possible and it is happening by law of nature only. There are different laws in the nature by which it is happening. Now when an event is taking place, so many things are involved and we have to look at the role of everything. So the uh, design of the plane, the driver, the pilot that is driving the plane, the flamingo, the temperature, pressure, in the atmosphere, all those things are there in uh, the scenario. So we, have, we can see the role of each and every which is involved. 
and then decide our role. It is time, Didi, so I cannot take any more questions. No, no, that's okay. That's okay, Bhaiya. It's a long discussion. We can discuss on various platforms. Thank you, you so much, Bhaiya. <laughs> it's a very <laughs> simple discussion. <laughs> See, <laughs> our attention is mostly outside, let me say. And we are mostly paying attention to events. So when yes, paying attention yes. outside, we are even not able to see the laws. We are trying to pay attention to events. And events are variety. And every right. time we have something more to you know, visualize. See, if you pay attention to the law, then it will become clear. And right, while right. paying attention outside, you also have to pay attention inside. Then this will right, become more right. clear. One right, thing that we can see that we have fear of death. Right, right, right. And that fear of death is there because you are not able to see the continuity of self. Jeez. Right, right. Namaste, Bhaiya. Thanks a lot. Namaste, Bhaiya.